was the first night home for the holidays and all through your town, not one thumb was quiet. A lot of swiping going down. You created the perfect Bumble profile with care in hopes that your dream guy or gal may be out there. When what to your wandering eyes should appear but a ton of faces you haven't seen in years. There's a rando from high school, your ex from eighth grade, a kid you used to babysit, and your literal Uncle Dave. As cringe as this feels, the only thing worse would be if one of them stumbled upon your profile first. But there's no need to panic or erase your face from the app. You can go incognito with one simple tap. Disappear from the others till you say they're a match and have more fun finding your next hometown catch. With peace of mind and your profile hidden from sight, happy holidating to all and to all a good night. Happy holidating with incognito mode from Bumble. Download today. Hey everyone. Here at What Next, our job is to ask questions. And this year, we asked a lot of serious ones about war, politics, fascism, healthcare. But some of our questions were a little less orthodox. Questions like, has pickleball invaded our towns? Do aliens exist? And is Steven Spielberg actually cursed? Since it's the holidays, we wanted to take a break from the headlines and listen back to some of our wackier questions. So if you're on a little vacation from the news right now, first of all, we forgive you. And second of all, we promise these shows are going to be like unwrapping a present, the kind you actually want to get. Today, we are asking a timeless question. Is the truth out there? Because it turns out, this was a big year for unidentified flying objects. Even Congress got involved. This conversation aired back in July. It's still one of our favorites. Last week, things got a little weird. In Washington. The subcommittee hearing on unidentified anomalous phenomena, or UAPs, will come to order. Wednesday morning, the House Oversight Committee gaveled in to hear testimony from three witnesses with experience in military and intelligence. All of them said they'd had close encounters with the unexplainable. There was a pilot who reported an unidentified flying object to the Pentagon back in 2014. The object, described as a dark gray or a black cube inside of a clear sphere, came within 50 feet of the lead aircraft and was estimated to be 5 to 15 feet in diameter. There was a Navy commander who said he saw something, an alien vehicle, out over the Pacific in 2004. You know, it's it's been said it's probably the most credible UFO sighting in history based on all the sensors that were tracking it. This encounter has become known as the Tic Tac incident because that's what the alleged craft looked like, a white Tic Tac. The world needs to know that. that this, it's not a joke. No, thank you very much. But some of the most shocking testimony came from a U.S. intelligence officer named David Grush. He told lawmakers he had knowledge of a government program that collects alien ships. He even implied that humans had been injured by aliens. Congress people were especially interested in what he had to say. Has any of the activity um, been aggressive, been um, hostile? in your reports? Uh, I know of multiple colleagues of mine that got physically injured. And uh, the activity... I gotta, by, by UAPs or by, by people within the federal government? Both. Okay. What he alleges is a 90-year cover-up by the U.S. government and other governments around the world uh, to cover up crashed spacecraft and even alien bodies. Those are pretty major allegations. <laughs> yes. Garrett Graff is a journalist who's written definitive histories of everything from Watergate to 9-11. His next book is called UFO. So you can see why I wanted to call him up and get his take on these hearings. To him, this congressional event, it was evidence that Washington's completely changed the way it thinks about a subject long thought to be within the realm of sci-fi which is why he wanted to write a whole book about this topic. I got interested in writing this book in 2020 when John Brennan, who was at the time the former White House Homeland Security Advisor, the former CIA director, 
gave an interview where he basically said, yeah, you know what? There's a bunch of stuff out there that we've seen that we don't know what it is. And I'm puzzled by it. Hmm. He's basically like, I'm open to interpretations here. Exactly. Um, and, and that stood out for me because John Brennan is someone who has been in a lot of really interesting rooms over the course of his career. He knows a lot of stuff that the rest of us are not privy to knowing. And there can't be that many true mysteries left in John Brennan's life. Can I ask you a question? Is believing in aliens kind of a mainstream thing now? Well, I, I think that there is, the conversation has shifted pretty dramatically over the last six years, because one of the things that we really have seen become clear is that there are things flying around in our airspace that we don't know what they are. Today on the show, how Washington started taking UFOs seriously. I'm Mary Harris. You're listening to What Next. Stick around. This show is brought to you by Discover. You know, in today's world, it can seem that the best treatment is reserved for only a few. Well, Discover wants to change that by making everyone feel special. That's why with your Discover card, you have access to 24-7 live customer service, as well as $0 fraud liability, which means you're never held responsible for unauthorized purchases. Finally, no matter who you are or where you are in life, you'll feel special with Discover. Learn more at discover.com slash credit card. Limitations apply. Twas the first night home for the holidays and all through your town. Not one thumb was quiet. A lot of swiping going down. You created the perfect Bumble profile with care in hopes that your dream guy or gal may be out there. When what to your wandering eyes should appear but a ton of faces you haven't seen in years. There's a rando from high school, your ex from eighth grade, a kid you used to babysit, and your literal Uncle Dave. As cringe as this feels, the only thing worse would be if one of them stumbled upon your profile first. But there's no need to panic or erase your face from the app. You can go incognito with one simple tap. Disappear from the others till you say they're a match and have more fun finding your next hometown catch. With peace of mind and your profile hidden from sight, happy holidating to all and to all a good night. Happy holidating with incognito mode from Bumble. Download today. At the end of reporting for your book, did you believe UFOs, alien life, they were real? Well, again, uh, there's some nomenclature there and, and some distinctions that are worth drawing. I think that's a maybe. Well, there's no doubt that there are UFOs and UAPs, um, you know, unidentified anomalous phenomenon is what the government now calls these UAPs. That doesn't mean it's aliens visiting Earth. We know that some chunk of this is actually advanced technologies being tested against the United States by adversaries. One of the things that the Pentagon has actually said, one of the only things that the Pentagon has said is that it has taken some of these UAP sightings and discovered a new, previously unknown transmedium Chinese drone, which is mm. uh, to say a, a Chinese drone that comes out of the water and transitions to flight. I do believe, and I am open to the possibility that some chunk of what we now consider UAPs is going to be truly weird stuff, literal physics that we don't currently understand. You know, if you think about physics, almost everything that we know about physics is something that we've learned in the last hundred years. And if you think about what we're going to learn about physics and the universe in the next hundred years, I think that there are going to be some surprising and weird answers for us. Can we start by talking about how our culture used to talk about aliens and UFOs? Like, I'm going to date myself here, but I grew up with UFOs very much being the stuff of fantasy 
Like, I have this vivid memory of a series of Time Life books you could order in the 80s called Mysteries of the Unknown. Northern Texas, an unidentified flying object is reported by at least a dozen people. Although there were no storms in the area, it's dismissed as lightning. And they were about ghosts and psychic powers and unidentified flying objects. Do you remember you know, how things used to be? Yeah, I'm a child of the 1980s too. So one of the first movies that I own was E.T. You know, this is a subject that I think has come a really long way in our lifetime. When I dove into the history of it, you know, it, it's really something that began in the wake of World War II in 1947 with uh, a series of sightings across the country. In that era, it was known originally as flying saucers. The U.S. Air Force began to study them and to destigmatize the idea of uh, of flying saucers. They they came up with the name of unidentified flying objects, UFOs. But did that work or did that just become stigmatized as well? Well, so ironically, that sort of became just as stigmatized. You know, now in this modern era, the government has renamed it UAPs to destigmatize UFOs, unidentified aerial phenomenon. They've even renamed UAPs to be unidentified anomalous phenomenon. Because some of these things are coming out of the water, right? Exactly. Not all of them are aerial. This hearing probably would not have happened without a series of reporting that started in 2017. Can you lay out exactly what happened? What you began to see happen in 2017 was a team of reporters, Leslie Keene and Ralph Blumenthal, both very well-respected journalists, reported that the Pentagon, despite what it had said publicly, had actually been engaged in a not huge, but not minor UFO study program that had been launched by Harry Reid, the Senate Majority Leader, and Robert Bigelow, who was a Nevada space entrepreneur and hotel magnate, with the help of Blink-182 frontman Tom DeLong. Hold it. How is Blink-182 involved? <laughs> this has become the sort of main cause of Tom DeLong. He had started an organization in the fall of 2017 called To The Stars Academy that sort of became the unofficial, official think tank of people who had worked on these programs inside government and now wanted to continue to work on them outside of government and talk about them more publicly. It's interesting because Harry Reid is involved. He's a very serious person, but then also involves kind of fringier figures that make you think like, hold it, what's going on here? Yes. So Leslie and Ralph published this piece in the New York Times, and that really you know, blew the lid off these Pentagon programs and led the military to begin to release some of these, some of these videos of pilots encounters with UAPs that are genuinely puzzling. I mean, it is the, you know, it is the U.S. Navy's saying on the record, we ran into this thing while we were, you know, flying around and we have no idea what it is. Yeah, part of what's so interesting to me about those videos is you can hear the pilots talking back and forth to each other and they're clearly puzzled in the moment. They're like, look at that thing. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. Oh my gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Like, I don't know what that is. And then look at it. It just rotated. We can't do that. You know, like they're right. they're they're basically saying like that's not something that's physically possible by us here. Yeah, and one of those uh, naval aviators was one of the witnesses in the hearing last week, and he said very clearly, like I think that the technology that I encountered both basically breaks known physics, 
but also breaks material sciences as we know it. This is technology that we wouldn't even understand how to create in the first place. Huh. Wow. You know, I'm sort of curious to ask you a little bit about the government's strategy here or if it has a strategy. It's like this slow drip, drip, drip of information. What is the strategy here as you see it? I don't think there is one. I think this is something that the government is enormously uncomfortable talking about and is sort of being forced into public discussion in a way that the government actually doesn't want. One of the things that's very clear to me, um, you know, I've, I've spent almost 20 years covering national security in Washington, and there is absolutely a government cover up around UFOs and UAPs. That cover-up, though, does not necessarily mean that the U.S. government has crashed alien spacecraft in a basement in Area 51, sort of a la Will Smith and Independence Day. What does it mean instead? Well, on the first level, the government instinctively covers up a bunch of this because it doesn't want to tell our adversaries what its sensors are actually picking up. There's a second level, which is surely some chunk of what the public considers UAPs are actually our own military technologies. When you dive back into the history, a huge percentage of the UFO sightings in the 1950s turn out in retrospect to be the U-2 spy plane. And then the third is to me sort of like the meat of the government cover up, which is, you know, when you go back over 75 years of this history, um, as I did in my book research, what you find is I, I think that this is much more a cover up of ignorance than it is of actual information. Hmm. And what I mean by that is. It's a really uncomfortable thing for the U.S. government, which spends $800 billion on defense every year, you know, plus the budget of the Homeland Security Department, to say, there's some weird stuff out there that we don't really know what it is. A big part of what the government is sort of finally trying to do in these last couple of years is to destigmatize the reporting of this so that they get their you know pilots and naval personnel and and trained observers to say yeah i saw something weird that i don't know what it is there's a real worry in those ranks that you know if you are a top of the line aerial fighter ace and you're like i just had an encounter with a ufo <laughs> that you know, someone's going to be like, you know, maybe actually you should take some time off from flying and spend some more time sitting at a desk. When we come back, how Congress is forcing the Pentagon to take UAPs more seriously. I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. Toyota Thon is on, so stop in and get a great deal on a rugged new Tacoma or Tundra, ready to tackle the toughest weather. Find out more at buyatoyota.com. Hurry, Toyota Thon ends January 2nd. Toyota, let's go places. Toyota Thon is on, so stop in and get a great deal on an off road ready RAV4 or spacious Highlander, both with available all wheel drive. Find out more at buyatoyota.com. Hurry, Toyota Thon ends January 2nd. Toyota, let's go places. In the years since that bombshell 2017 report, Congress has gradually gotten more serious about unidentified anomalous phenomena. 
One way they've done that is by offering whistleblower protections to people inside the Pentagon who want to come forward with more stories of UAPs. That's how the world would eventually get to know David Grush, the career intelligence officer whose testimony was so shocking to hear last week. Uh, that's the holographic principle. So you can be projected, quasi-projected from higher dimensional space to lower dimensional. It's a scientific trope that you can actually cross. Literally, as far as I understand. David Grush came forward under those new provisions earlier this year to the House and Senate Intelligence Committees to uh, activate those, you know, whistleblower protections and speak with the inspectors general to basically say, I believe that there is unsanctioned and unacknowledged UFO work going on in the Pentagon. Hmm. It seems to me that David Grush, he wanted attention, which is kind of sometimes true with whistleblowers, that that's what they're doing. It, it, did that strike you as well? Yes, I think that that is uh, very much part of the David Grush story. After he came forward and testified in, in closed door sessions to the Congressional Intelligence Committees, he then began to sort of shop his story around to reporters and ended up with this Leslie Keen and Ralph Blumenthal story in this website called The Debrief that came out on a Monday. And that evening, he gave a very extensive interview on the cable channel News Nation. And interestingly, made a pretty different set of claims. In the debrief article, he talked pretty specifically that the U.S. government has a UFO crash retrieval program that has recovered crashed alien spacecraft, which is already pretty explosive. Um, it's entirely possible that most of what he's saying in the debrief article is in fact true, but that could still stop short of it actually being alien technology. But then in the News Nation TV interview, he sort of removes any shadow of a doubt and says, not only does the U.S. government have crashed alien spacecraft, but it has alien bodies and it's part of a 90 year cover up dating all the way back to fascist Italy and Mussolini and the Vatican in the 1930s. Yeah, that actually happened. The Italian government moved it to a secure uh, air base in Italy for the, the rest of kind of the fascist regime until 1944, 1945. And, you know, the uh, Pope Pius XII back channeled that. So the Vatican um, was involved. Yeah, and told the Americans what the Italians had, and, and we ended up scooping it. it. It was notable to me that David Grush did not repeat some of the most outlandish claims that he's made in his media interviews to Congress under oath, under the threat of perjury. Was he even asked about them? He was not particularly pressed on the specifics of some of them. And he used the sort of restrictions on his ability to talk about classified information in an unclassified open setting as an excuse to not answer some of the more direct questions that he got. Yeah, I noticed that too. He'd be like, oh, I could answer that in private, but not here. Surely some part of that is actually true, but he still said things in his News Nation interview that he did not pick up the opportunity to say in his congressional testimony. So how would you characterize the reaction to David Grush's revelations? Uh, it depends a lot on who you ask. There is a chunk of the UFO community who sees this as the big disclosure. You know, this is a former intelligence officer saying the U.S. government has alien bodies. That is a very explosive claim. It's one, though, that David Grush does not have firsthand knowledge of, which to me is an important caveat to this. And when you look at this story over the last 75 years, this is actually a pretty familiar tale. 
There's even in UFOlogy a name for this. Thomas Bullard, who's a mythologist who covers UFOs, calls them folk tales. Folk tales? Friend of a friend tales. Huh. Stories that I don't know personally, but I talked to a guy or I met a guy in a bar or a friend of mine told me that he works on you know, this secret thing. How often are folk tales credible? Over 40 years of these folk tales coming forward, uh, what we have never seen is a single piece of documentary evidence. I mean, David Grush's story, whether you believe it or not, it did have one big impact, which is it really put pressure on Congress to have the hearings that they had, right? Yes. And, 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 I, and again, I think that it is almost certainly true that much of what David Grush is saying is true. The U.S. government for 100 years has had a special team of Air Force and intelligence personnel whose job it is to go around the world and hoover up anything that crashes that we don't know what it is. That program exists. I also believe that it's highly likely that that team has found technologies uh, that it doesn't know what they are. But that doesn't necessarily mean the final leap is true in David Grush's uh, testimony and interviews, which is that the U.S. government has officially concluded that it has retrieved alien technology. So let's talk about the hearing itself, because it was interesting to me to watch even just how it began with, you know, the the chairman basically saying, like, let's not think of this as silly. And, you know, let's talk about the fact that Gerald Ford and Jimmy Carter both claim to have seen UFOs, basically saying we need to put this in a credible space. And then you have the three witnesses and the three witnesses, if you've been paying attention to UFO news, they're kind of they're the usual suspects, right? You have Lieutenant Ryan Graves. He had been quoted years ago as someone who had, had seen unidentified flying objects. Commander David Fravor and David Grush, and they were all sitting there. When you listen to their testimony, were there new things here? Were there things that surprised you? As someone who covers this very closely, uh, no. Almost everything that we heard last week was not new information. Um, It was obviously new for it to be being discussed in a congressional hearing room. They are part of a really historic shift in this story where you have serious people asking serious questions about this phenomenon. To me, the best parts of the hearing were when members of Congress were asking, you know, basically, what do we need to do to take this more seriously? There is a genuine mystery here, and it it is one that for a whole variety of reasons, both scientific and national security, we would be well served as a government and a society to try to solve. But there are a whole lot of super interesting and important answers that this mystery could be even before you get to the idea that these are extraterrestrials visiting planet Earth. Yeah. I kind of wonder if you think that we, like regular people, need to reframe how we think about what happens now. Because I think that I hear a hearing about UFOs and unexplained things in the sky, and I'm primed to think like, oh, maybe this testimony means that Congress is about to make a new men in black, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like that's what I, where I go in my head. But If they don't already have a men in black. Exactly. <laughs> but maybe what we're really talking about here is saying, hey, if you see something weird in the sky, it's could be really dangerous because you could like run smack into it. So report it and we'll look into it. Right. And it's like more of just like a normal thing. Yes. Um, And and I think that that's really what this whole push since 2017 has been, which is, you know, let's take the stigma out of this conversation. Let's let us have, 
you know, as a military, as a government, as an aviation community, have a serious conversation about this, allow people to ask serious questions, come forward with the questions that they do have. And for a bunch of reasons, again, both scientific and national security, we should be more curious about the things that are in our sky that we don't know what they are. And admitting that there are things in the sky that we don't know what they are should not be seen as being equal to, I believe in aliens and flying saucers visiting Earth. And I think that sort of breaking that connection in people's minds is the most important part of where this conversation is evolving right now. Garrett, I'm really grateful for your time. Thanks for coming on the show and just explaining this all to me. My pleasure. This was a fun conversation. Garrett Graff is a contributor at Wired Magazine. He's also the author of the book UFO, the inside story of the U.S. government's search for alien life here and out there. Since we spoke, Garrett's book has actually come out. So if you're still looking for a gift for someone on your list, check it out. And that's our show. What Next is produced by Paige Osborne, Alana Schwartz, Rob Gunther, Madeline Ducharme, and Anna Phillips. We are led by Alicia Montgomery with a little help from Susan Matthews. Ben Richmond is the Senior Director of Podcast Operations here at Slate. And I'm Mary Harris. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you back here tomorrow. Toyota Thon is on. So stop in and get a great deal on a rugged new Tacoma or Tundra, ready to tackle the toughest weather. Find out more at buyatoyota.com. Hurry, Toyota Thon ends January 2nd. Toyota, let's go places. Toyota Thon is on. So stop in and get a great deal on an off road ready RAV4 or spacious Highlander, both with available all wheel drive. Find out more at buyatoyota.com. Hurry, Toyota Thon ends January 2nd. Toyota, let's go places.